Brianna, thank you. Here in Jacksonville, demonstrators are pro uh, protesting an execution scheduled for tomorrow. Donald Dilbeck, a twice convicted murderer, was sentenced to death more than 20 years ago, but protesters note his jury had a split verdict, which is no longer legal. Florida law now requires a unanimous death verdict. On your side, Tristan Hardy is joining us tonight live from the Duval County Courthouse. Tristan, uh, Tristan tell us what's happening with this protest right now. Right, Anthony. So demonstrators have been going city to city, bringing awareness to Dilbeck's case. Now, yesterday they were in Orlando. Today they're in front of the Duval County Courthouse. They're still here holding up signs. And tomorrow they'll be in Rayford, and that's where the Florida State Death Row is located. Donald Dilbeck has been locked up since he was convicted of murder at 16. Now, the only time he's been out since then was when he escaped and killed again in the case that sent him to death row. Now 59, Dilbeck is slated to be put to death at 6 p.m. tomorrow, the first person executed in Florida since 2019. I think when we're asking the state to take a life um, like they're uh, planning to do tomorrow night uh, with Donald Dilbeck, then I think it needs to be completely above board. Justin Mazzola with Amnesty International has been following Dilbeck's case for years. He and others are calling on Governor Ron DeSantis to spare Dilbeck. But the governor signed his death warrant in January and is in fact pushing for a change to Florida law to again allow non-unanimous death verdicts. After Dilbeck was sentenced to death by an 8-4 to four verdict, the law changed. Since 2016, death verdicts have been required to be unanimous. The law applied retroactively to some inmates, but not all. Um, and so about 150 of the 300 people who were approximately on death row at the time were only able to get their um, uh, resentencing based on the Supreme Court decision. The changes did not apply to Dilbeck because he had already exhausted all appeals and his sentence was final. His case preceded that 2002 decision by the Supreme Court, which required that um, juries basically decide whether or not an individual gets capital punishment or not. Now, demonstrators will protest Dilibeck's execution tomorrow night, and after that, they will travel to Tallahassee for a service of remembrance. We're live in downtown Jacksonville. I'm Tristan Hardy, First Coast News, on your side.